Hey, this is Bob from Fast and Nature, and while you watch me flip some rocks, I want to use that sensational beginning of the video to prove a point and go right into fact number one, which is respect. I had the footage, I figured I would put it in there. Now I was outside of striking distance as I had my cell phone zoomed in, but you always have to respect these creatures. They are not aggressive, they are not mean, they are defensive. I did something that made that snake feel like it had to defend itself. That's why it struck. I did not put that video in there to look tough or to be cool, but to show you how quickly they can strike and how you need to respect the snake and stay outside of its range. Again, if you are uncomfortable with snakes, you will never get bit as long as you walk around. I put myself close to the snake. It felt like it had to defend itself. Now I realize I put that video in there and you may have been startled, but what I want to preach here is respect over fear. You do not need to fear the snake. It's like a loaded gun though and has a potential to harm you. But as long as you're not playing with that loaded gun, nobody's going to get hurt. This ties us directly into fact number two, which is northern copperheads are a venomous pit viper and are potentially harmful to humans. In fact, more people are bitten by copperheads on the east coast than any other venomous snake. Their bites can be very painful, but fortunately only one death has ever been documented. The venom of copperheads is hemotoxic and destroys red blood cells and other tissues, but they're not considered highly toxic to humans. However, if you are bitten, you should probably seek medical attention immediately. Fact number three, confusing species. Unfortunately, copperheads are confused with many non-venomous snakes. The most common of those would be water snakes and milk snakes. There are some big differences though. And listen, I could and probably will do a whole video detailing the confusion between copperheads and other species. But for now, let's keep it simple. Copperheads are pit vipers. They have open pits on their face, as well as elliptical pupils. Any other non-venomous snake in its area or range has round pupils. Look at the northern water snake and the milk snake. You can easily see the difference in pupils between a copperhead and non-venomous snakes, as well as a lack of a pit on the face. A lot of people like to point to the triangular head of pit vipers, and that's true. They do have triangular heads compared to northern water snakes and milk snakes, but I would implore you to please be careful here because northern water snakes can pull their heads back, as pictured here, showing off a triangular head, and unfortunately they are killed by people thinking they are copperheads when this happens. You know where I stand though, venomous or non-venomous, nothing needs to be killed everything needs to be respected in nature they all have their particular job to do and niche in the environment before we move on though i'm going to make it real simple for you if you're not a snake enthusiast it's easy enough just to walk around as i mentioned before just keep your distance away from the snake if you can't make a proper identification if you don't have the skill or you don't have the experience with the snakes to make a proper id in the field just leave the snake be and nobody needs to get hurt that includes you or the snake fact number four food copperheads are a generalist predator who will opportunistically eat a wide variety of prey more so than most other venomous snakes. The diet of adults consists mostly of vertebrates such as voles, mice, birds, frogs, lizards, and other snakes, and they will eat large insects. They usually ambush their prey, but sometimes have been seen actively foraging for cicadas in trees. I've even seen photos of them eating bats. Juvenile copperheads are born with neon yellowish green tails that they will wiggle as a call to lure to lure in prey close enough to bring them within strike range. Fact number five, reproduction. Copperheads usually mate in the spring just after emerging from hibernation, but fall mating has also been observed. In the northern parts of their range, they will congregate around gestation sites. In these photos, you're going to see many gravid female copperheads. I believe I counted 18 in this one spot. 
The female's sexual maturity is reached in two to three years, and they can give birth to up to 18 live young between mid-August and early October, depending on where they are in the country. Fact number six, field guide style description. Northern copperheads are medium-sized, heavy-bodied snakes. The head is large, flat, and triangular, and is distinctly set off from the body by a narrow neck. Copperheads are attractive snakes, patterned in rich earth tones. The dorsal background coloration varies from pinkish brown to light tan. Dorsal bands are distributed at regular intervals along the body. The bands are narrowest mid-dorsally and widest at the ventrolateral margins, giving them an hourglass shape. The bands are chestnut brown, becoming darker near the margins. Dark spots may occur in the lighter lateral portions of the bands and in the background areas between bands. The banding pattern continues onto the tail. Although this is a very bold pattern when viewed out of context, it is exceedingly cryptic in the normal habitat of the animals. This is taken from Amphibians and Reptiles of Pennsylvania by Arthur Hulse. A quick reminder, if this video gives you value, please throw me a like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications on more videos. Fact number seven, distribution. The northern copperhead is found from Massachusetts to Virginia, west to Illinois, and south to the uplands of Georgia and northern Alabama. Intergrades of the southern and northern copperhead are apparently found in a broad band from the Delmarva Peninsula through eastern Virginia and the Carolinas, westward through central Georgia and central Alabama, and north to Illinois. It should be noted that recently, northern and southern copperheads no longer exist and are being referred to as eastern copperheads. The map here displays all Agkistrodon contortex species, including the broadband copperhead. Fact number eight, etymology. Agkistrodon is reserved for a genus of pit vipers in North America and is derived from the Greek word ancestron, which means fish hook. This is in reference to the recurved fang. Contortrix is from the Latin word contortus, which means twisted or intricate, and that's in reference to the dorsal pattern. Number nine, nocturnal behavior. While copperheads are diurnal during the early spring and late fall, when the weather warms up, they turn to nighttime behavior. If you're in the search of copperheads, I'd say the nighttime is the right time. In this cell phone video, I hiked up a copperhead along a rocky bluff. This is a bit sketchy though, as it's tough to see and you could fall and possibly hurt the snake or get bit and I would much rather road cruise for copperheads at night. During the heat and humidity of summer, copperheads can be found somewhat easily on roads in the right habitat. I suggest moving the snakes off the road in the direction they were going, but always using the proper tools. Lastly, fact number 10, conservation. This species is classified as least concern on the IUCN red list of threatened species. This means that relative to many other species, it's not at risk of extinction in the near future. The population trend was stable when assessed last in 2007, and I suspect things have not changed. At the edge of its range, the copperhead is classified as a species of concern. In my area, copperheads are only found in northern Jersey, and they are also a species of concern in the state of Pennsylvania. Despite the stable status of copperheads, I want to take a moment to discuss the persecution that humans have placed upon venomous snakes for decades and possibly centuries. It is important to educate, inspire, and increase the appreciation of these much needed snakes in the natural environment. At the very least, if we can get people to understand the copperhead's role in nature, this can prevent unnecessary killing out of ignorance and fear. And don't we owe Mother Nature at least that for everything she has given us? This is Bob Ferguson with Fast Nature, reminding you to step outside.